Welcome to another template walkthrough. This is the template walkthrough for the Heart Mosaic template. To fill you in, if you're unfamiliar with what a mosaic is, it's basically any artwork made by bringing a lot of little pieces together to make a larger image. Uh, in this sort of mosaic template, we've got a lot of little things uh, to show off and a lot of uh, goodies for people of all skill levels. So make sure to check out the whole video and I'll walk you through the simple mosaic example, the gradient mosaic example, and the ramp texture example. Now the ramp texture example is the one you see on the screen here. Notice I can change the resolution of the effect with a slider. When you look at the largest version where all of the hearts are the largest, you can see that the image is actually being rendered just by showing different hearts on the screen. Now what's going on here? The first thing that is happening is that we're taking in the camera and we, we have uh, <laughs> our camera here, our 3D camera, with the output to a buffer texture. So you can put anything under this 3D camera that you want or this other 2D camera that you want and it'll appear as in this next stage. Uh, as you can see, if I turn the resolution way up, you can see I have hearts on my eyes. Now this is attached with a head tracker in the general pre-processing. So those hearts are just on my eyes on a normal camera and then we're making sure that it passes along to our next step, which is this ramp texture example. Um, so I just wanted to let you know you can put anything in those first two nodes and it, it will uh, be captured by those cameras and used here instead of just the plain old cap camera input. Um, but yeah, so as we make the symbols, the little hearts smaller and smaller, it starts to look more like a real image. And after the halfway point, it almost feels like there's really an, just a video feed. <laughs> it really just looks like, uh, you know, a low resolution video. So that's really cool and I, I think it's really fun to slide up and down between them so you if you know visual scripting maybe you can remove the slider altogether and animate it with some transit by time nodes. Um, now that I've explained what's going on and what you're seeing and you understand how cool it is we can take a look at the materials and maybe change some of the settings to make some custom uh, new ramp shaders. Uh, so if you take a look the only things that you can really change in this first one, the sprite ramp mosaic material, is the, heart, is the uh, ramp texture. Now if we take a look at this ramp texture, we're using the heart ramp. So the heart ramp is just this long texture with 11 hearts, and the first one is the brightest. So we want to go from bright to dark. Notice the way that we make it go from bright to dark is not only the color of the heart, but the size of the heart and how much of this square that it takes up. So each of these are in their own little square, and then all the way on the right, it's in the same size square, but the heart is very dark colored and small. Um, so if you want to create one of these ramp textures, just make sure that you're very exact with fitting your uh, ob objects into their own boxes and making sure that the total brightness of each box goes from brightest to darkest. So this one is a little funny and a little fun. Uh, there, there are all kinds of different shaped hearts, so you can really go crazy with it and just experiment and try different things. Um, feel free to try all of the other sprite ramp textures to see how different shapes look differently. Um, this, the only other thing you'll edit here is if you do make your own ramp, um, you'll just make sure to put how many uh, objects are in there. So since we have 11 hearts, this number is 11, you can make a ramp texture with 100 hearts. And then just remember to set this number to 100. Uh, notice that in each of these materials, there's a section called set by slider. Now, if you delete the slider subgraphs in the visual scripting section, you can set these values on your own. Otherwise, um, these values are going to be set by the slider in the subgraph. So you won't be able to set these because they'll be overwritten by the slider in the subgraph. Moving on to the next, uh, the next material. Um, so while we look at this material, I'm just going to turn on the object that is 
running this material. And then we'll look at the in the inspector at all the settings we can change. This one is probably my favorite because it's so cool what you can do with just a bunch of hearts on this screen that represent the brightness of the pixels. And just like creating this one set of four colors um, that are just the gradient. And just watching, seeing how cool it looks. Now, if you want your hearts to dynamically get larger and smaller to also represent the brightness and help that, um, you can change this minimum brightness. And notice if I go all the way down to zero, <laughs> it, it's almost like there's a, a bit more complex shading, something very cool. Um, and then I can bring it up. Maybe this, is, this makes the most sense in my opinion, but everyone is their own designer, so do whatever you want, whatever you think looks cool. Uh, I would say for these uh, colors, maybe use some sort of color palette choosing website to try out a bunch of different types and uh, test out what looks cool. Um, let's see, what else should I point out in this one? The only other difference with this one is that the symbol texture is not a ramp. Um, this is much, much more beginner friendly. You don't have to know how to make a ramp texture at all. You can literally download any square image, create any square image, and just import it and swap it here. And instead of a heart, it could easily become a rose, for instance. And then when you zoom in, <laughs> now you have flowers representing your image. So that one's my favorite because I think the gradient really makes it easy to make it make your own expression of some cool artistic vision. And this is the one without a shader. <laughs> uh, here's the last one. This one is the simplest one. And I, if I switch in the asset panel to the simple mosaic material, you'll see that there's not a gradient. This one is just uh, one color for all of the icons. And it's doing the sh shading completely just by setting this brightness and scaling the size of the image. So we're still just using one heart. But in the darker areas, since we have a dark background color, it's going to look darker when we make the object smaller to reveal more of that dark background. So if you want it to represent the true image, you'll keep your tint color very light and your background color very dark. Um, you'll notice if we flip this around, it'll, uh, <clears throat> it'll look kind of like an inverted image. <laughs> and you might like that. That might be what you're going for. So. Try, try a bunch of different stuff. Um, and feel free, if you're going to make a more complex effect, to include visual scripting that animates some of these values to make some really cool, dynamic stuff. Um, while we go to the other things I wanted to talk about, we can um, switch back to this cool looking one. <laughs> uh, so the last thing to take a look at is going to be these subgraphs. Now, if I open up the 2D foreground effects, this is where we have a camera just to do this UI slider. And notice that we have a horizontal slider bar and a vertical slider bar. Now, if you want a horizontal slider instead of a vertical slider, you can enable uh, this one and make sure to uncheck hide slider always and then do the exact opposite for the one that we were previously using which was the vertical slider. So now you might notice that the we're hiding the vertical slider and we have disabled the vertical slider so it's gone. Um, once you choose a slider I would recommend just deleting whichever subgraph uh, is the slider that you're not using. Um, no real reason other than just to reduce the amount of nodes that you have in your project. Um, some of the settings that you can change on your slider are the minimum symbol size and the maximum symbol size. So if you want this slider, so right now this slider goes from 15, which is this, to 65, which is this. And 15, as you could count if you wanted to, basically represents the number of roses that will go atop, across the top of the screen. So 65 roses here is a little harder to count, so you'll just have to trust me. Now, the other thing that I think is very important are the hide on record and full screen slider hitbox. 
If you have the full screen slider hitbox checked, then you don't have to actually click on the slider. You can click anywhere on the screen and swipe left and right to change the resolution. This might be really valuable for your effect because it means that people could use the slider even though um, the slider is hidden. So if we hit have slider on record and we have our recording started, <laughs> oh wait, um, hide slider on record, um, then we would still be able to, uh, oh, hide slider always then we would still be able to change the resolution. That's really nice because when you're recording a video, you uh, a lot of times you wanna hide the UI so you can't see it, but sometimes you still wanna be able to animate things. So that's very useful and nice to have. Um, I think that is all that I wanted to show. Uh, I think a lot of people will have a lot of fun with this. And if you take a look inside of this bigger subgraph, you'll you'll see there's a couple really nice reusable horizontal slider and vertical slider subgraphs that you can use for anything. Um, it's really useful because all you have to do is put in your slider bar and your slider knob and it'll do the rest. Uh, you don't have to do anything else and then instantly it's clickable and touchable on the screen. Um, if anybody else uh, uses this, then uh, feel free to ask questions in the Discord or the community forums on our website. Uh, and good luck, and I hope you make some awesome things.